everyone, welcome back to Silicon Sounds, audio for the rest of us. Today it's my great pleasure to review the Simgot EM6L Phoenix. I will subtitle this review as The Enchantress. The Simgot Phoenix, the EM6L we'll call it from now on, or just Phoenix for short, wonderful IEM, but let's get into why I think it's so. And as well, some interesting comparisons with, with even one of its stable mates. Uh, it's a recent release from the previously under the radar company who've been around a while, but have operated under the radar, uh, who garnered well-deserved interest with their EA500, which I've reviewed previously and I will compare later. The A500 is a sound that defied its asking price of $79 US, while the EM6L, uh, the asking price is somewhat higher at $110 US, so there is a step up in cost. The EM6L has a driver setup that includes a single 8mm custom designed high polymer diaphragm, dual cavity dynamic driver. That's quite a mouthful, <laughs> if you ask me. Um, uh, paired uh, with four BA drivers, two for mids, two for treble, all tuned to the Harbin Harman 2019 curve, according to SimGot. The drivers are managed via a three-way crossover, which on listening seems to be well implemented, allowing each driver to operate in the frequency range where their design makes them most appropriate. Notable as well was the smooth transition between the drivers. The SimGot EM6L is easy to drive, yet due to its resolving capabilities, which are quite surprising for, for an IM at this price, uh, they really deserve to be paired with a more capable source. Also, tip selection is critical. I use a shallow, uh, wide board tip with deep insertion, and the resulting sound was fantastic. So let's go through the specs a little bit. Uh, impedance, 26 ohms. Sensitivity, 119 dB per milliwatt, or as so it says. Frequency response, 20 to 20 kilohertz. And the cable is a two pin with a QDC connector. I'm not a fan of QDC connectors, but it is what it is. It will not stop me from appreciating the sound of this IEM. Build fit and quality. The EM6L is nicely finished IEM, but done in a very basic style, as we can see here. It's not a flashy product by any means with a simple presentation, both in its retail presentation and the look of the shells themselves. Uh, the quality resin shell is on the small side of medium in size and having a comfortable fit was not an issue. As well, the nozzle protrudes enough where with the right tip selection, deep insertion with a good seal is definitely possible. Quality of manufacture is good, no glaring issues were noted. Uh, again, QDC connector, let's not go there. <laughs> not one of my favorite things to see. Uh, the included accessories are sparse, but similar quality to the IEM. Uh, but really, we're here for the sound, so let's move on. Let's talk about the bass from this driver. Uh, more sub-bass focused than mid-bass, this is not a bass head earphone. Yet the low end had good power and ample drive when required by the source material. Bass does go deep and is controlled not being muddy at all with good speed. Detail is good as well with the base texture on Angel by Massive Attack coming through with an added kind of a round thickness that was very pleasing. That being said, not with the greatest detail I've heard uh, for this bass track or bass in general at this price range, but very pleasing nonetheless. Same can be said for Circumstance by Wayman Tisdale, really highlighted the bass control uh, that was heard on a number of other tracks. One thing about this EM6L that I will point out again and again, it's like a chameleon, a shapeshifter. It does so well with so many different genres. Very good. Uh, so in the end, based on the EM6L is good. It has great control with enough detail and power to complement any track of any genre in a positive way. Very well done. Mid-range. The mid-range of the SimGot EM6L Phoenix is slightly recessed while being detailed with an admirable, admirable balance of macro and micro details. 
The EM6L is surprisingly detailed, and the detail retrieval that you hear from these is rare in an IEM of this price range. Clarity here is also notable with good note weight and timber. There is an organic, an organic character in the in the audio delivery of the mid-range that's found to be very satisfying and again unusual at this price range. Layering and separation were also quite good, uh, which aided the fantastic imaging capabilities of this earphone we'll talk about a little bit later. No Worries by Robert Glasper, one of my go-to tracks, Robert Glasper Trio. It made me sit up. I start usually with that track. It made me sit up when I heard it and take notice of how lively and detailed the track sounded on the EM6L. Uh, it's a busy track, even though it's a trio, quite busy, fantastic music musicianship throughout the track. And many other lesser IMs can easily sound congested with each instrument becoming really indistinct, indistinct uh, becoming too homogenous, too together. That wasn't an issue with the EM6L at all. Uh, none of these issues occurred. Each instrument was easily discerned in its own space with a clarity of playback that was very pleasing. Moving on to vocal tracks, Barley by Liz Wright had her husky female vocals sounding great. There's a touch of added warmth here um, in the lower mid-range that is well done and very tastefully done. Sweet Love by Anita Baker had her soaring vocals sounding lush. Uh, another thing about the mid-range of the EM6L, <laughs> there's a sense of lushness to it, but not at the expense of accuracy and clarity. You can easily tell the emotions in the delivery of this fantastic artist. Male vocals got the same treatment. Tenderhearted Lover by John Stoddart had his emotional vocal delivery coming through with conviction. I keep forgetting by Michael Donald, my McDonald, likewise. Here I Come by the iconic reggae artist Dennis Brown sounded fantastic on the EM6L. Great vocal delivery, very balanced male vocal delivery. So, with respect to the mid-range, the mid-range of the Simga EM6L punches well above its asking price. It is an open and detailed presentation with splendid technicalities that has a lush element about it with good organics, timber, and balanced delivery. No harshness or aggressivity noticed at all. Very well done. So let's move on to the treble. Well, treble is well extended with a commendable level of detail retrieval and technicalities once again. Air and sparkle are present in good measure, but not sounding overdone by any means. The tuning here is organic and controlled. You're not getting an over embellishment. You're getting what it's, what's in the track. Nothing is missing. And the listener is sure to hear everything going on in the upper registers. No fatigue or grain heard here. The airiness and clarity of the EM6L's treble is very pleasing. Once again, well done. Imaging and soundstage. Now, this is where things get interesting as well. Uh, I had the same effect when I used to listen to the Tin Hi-Fi T3+. Plus. And now this, I have to say, might even be superior to that in terms of the imaging. The Simgot EM6L Phoenix offers soundstage that is impressively immersive. Width and depth are impressive. Depth, very hard to reproduce, it seems, in in-air monitors, but it's here. Height is not as impressive, but it doesn't sound out of proportion. Still very good. Just enough to add to the immersive quality that the EM6L can produce. Stimula by Hugh Masekela, the live recording of it, one of my go-to tracks. Um, transported the listener to the venue with a sense of immersion not usually heard in earphones even at a much higher cost. Instrument placement was also spot on. With respect to imaging and soundstage, the EM6L gets top marks. Let's do some verses here. Hi, Senior T2U. My unsung hero in the $100 price range and far above. Let's compare the two. Well, the T2U is a personal favorite of mine. I've reviewed it. Uh, now they have the T4, which is um, another fantastic play on the, um, on the T2U. It actually sounds like a much more mature T2U, if that's possible at all. So, 
The T2U is very simple, has a driver complement of just two balanced armature drivers. Um, base goes deeper and is more slam on the EM6L while being faster and slightly more detailed on the T2U. Uh, the mid-range of the EM6L is, has more of a lush character with it, with detail retrieval of T2U being arguably slightly better. And we're nitpicking here because the EM6L has great detail retrieval as well. Um, the EM6L also has a livelier presentation, particularly in the mid-range. As for note weight, the EM6L also gets the nod here, but when we come to layering and separation, a slight nod will go to the T2U, which is fantastic at that. Sound stage is where they differ quite a bit. The T2U has a more intimate sound stage, while the EM6L is more expansive, but neither, neither sounds restrained nor congested. I will say that presently, these are the two top IEMs in my humble uh, opinionated uh, music lover ears um, in the $100 range. Absolutely, these two are tops. And I will keep both of them if I had both of them. The Simgot EA500. This is a stable mate of, and a less expensive stable mate of the EM6L. <laughs> these shells are so easy to, to get fingerprints on. Standout IEM with easy base mod just cover this port here everybody's talking about it. I actually like them better with the base mod but how do they compare well is the EM6L worth the price increase from the EA500 my answer to that is yes it is uh, I'll answer that main question right away in a nutshell the EM6L is a more refined EA500 with all the positives while improving upon any negatives. In every aspect, the EM6L sounds more refined than the already great EA500, even after the mods. This isn't to say that the EA500 sounds bad. With the, with the uh, vent port mod, it sounds incredible for the price. But there's a certain, especially in the treble and upper mid region, um, the EM6L just has more refinement, while the EA500 can at times sound a little uh, sharp, but not, uh, there's no sibilance or anything, but not as refined and smooth as the EM6L. In terms of uh, things such as uh, detail retrieval, the EM6L definitely over the EA500. In terms of low bass, with the bass mod, these are exceptionally close, both in terms of slam and detail retrieval in the low end. But still, the EM6L gets the, EM6L gets the nod. In the upper treble, I would definitely give it to the EM6L. The EA500 sounds fantastic, but in direct comparison, um, can sound a touch more ragged in the upper registers, while the EM6L has a much more smoother delivery. So that's those. I'll bring those all here. So let's talk about a conclusion now. Obviously, I really enjoy the EM6L. The SimGot EM6L is a wonderful IEM. Rarely have I gotten lost in music with an IEM, and this was one of those times. From the first uh, few bars of uh, the Robert Glasper Trio to moving on to Joe Sample, moving on to house music, um, S, uh, VGO, other artists, moving on to more jazz, contemporary, Michael McDonald, and so on. Uh, the EM6L accomplished something which very few IEMs that I've listened to have done, and that is to dig deep <laughs> in my, in my um, library of music and just enjoy the music, putting off any critical listening or reviews for some other time. It does not favor one genre over another. Some people have called it a chameleon. I'll call it a shape shifter. In this regard, it's eminently versatile without the need, and listen to this, without the need for the user to play with switches or nozzle filters to accomplish good sound. Can we please go back to those times, manufacturers? Can we please go back to those times? I found the SimGot EM6L Phoenix to often be an immersive experience enjoying music for the sake of itself and forgetting to be critical. This in my book is high praise indeed. I'll move these away so the star of the show can have center stage. Uh, I would say that 
The SimGlot EM6L is a must hear for those who are interested in an IEM at that price range. Uh, definitely. If you're shopping in this price range and even above the price range, I would give it a serious consideration. It has now joined with my high senior T2U, my beloved, as the benchmarks for me in the $100 price range and even significantly above. Unsung heroes in that price bracket, challenging and often embarrassing other IAMs that cost much more. The SimGot EM6L Phoenix gets a firm recommendation from Silicon Sounds. Thank you for watching the video. Please like and subscribe and look forward to more videos, bringing more videos to you. Want to make a big shout out to the uh, Canuck Audioholics group. Uh, we're a small group in Canada who um, love audio and just love each other's company, uh, listening to each other's gear. Really appreciate that. And want to take a big shout out to SimGot. I did not do not own these. I actually borrowed these from the Audioholics, the Canuck Audioholics group. Uh, you make some good stuff, man. Keep it up and uh, keep moving forward. Thanks again and see you in the next video.